preach to you uh, from the book of Job. And just like my brother has read Job chapter 14, verse 7 to verse number 12. Job chapter 14, verse 7 to 12. Let us pray. Father, we call upon you to manifest your power and your presence in this place in a dramatic way. So that our eyes will see you. That we will not only hear you by the hearing of the ear. But our eyes will see you. And our mouths will be filled with testimonies. To testify of your goodness and your mercy. Lord we pray that may you empower us in such unique ways. Through the preaching of your word this morning. So that by the time we leave this place, we will leave inspired. We will leave motivated. We will leave encouraged. We will leave ministered to. So that as we walk out of these doors, we will be witnesses. We will be able to bear witness of you to our friends and our friends' friends. We give you all the glory and all the honor. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, the Bible speaks of Job as the most righteous man in the East. And that is because Job was indeed righteous. And we know the trouble that befell Job. It was so drastic that Job lost everything. But the Bible tells us that in all this, in everything that Job went through, Job did not sin against God. But being the righteous man that he is, that he was, Job expressed his faith and dependence in God in the face of adversity when he said, I know that my Redeemer liveth. Though he slays me, yet will I serve him. So the issue here is not on the righteousness of Job because Job was a righteous man and he, he expressed his Faith and dependence on God in the face of terrorizing circumstance. But Job had a weakness. Job had a weakness. Job was rich and righteous, or Job was righteous, feared God, depended on God, but Job had a weakness. This morning, I came to speak to someone who is righteous in the eyes of the Lord. You are righteous because you have not bowed down to the grieving images of life. You are righteous because you have Jesus in your life. The issue is not about your righteousness because thank God you are saved. I came to talk about the weaknesses of the righteous. Job was righteous, but Job had a weakness. Job expressed his weakness in the words that he said. Even though Job put his trust in God, that confirmed his righteousness and dependence on God, but Job gave up on himself. Job gave up on life. Job allowed the pressure of his misfortune to affect his theology, to affect his understanding of God and life. So your problem is not that you are not righteous. You love God. You live right. But you are allowing 
the pressures that you are currently going through to deform your theology. You are allowing the pressures or the challenge you are currently in to cause you to give up on yourself. To give up on your marriage. To give up on your children. That's not a scene in itself. It's just a problem. Job had this problem. The Bible said when Job came to terms with the fact that he's been hit, he's lost everything, Job began to cry. He said, curse be the day that I was born. He said, let no rain fall on that day. He said, let no sun shine on that day. He said, let that day be forgotten from the face of the earth. Because it did not stop my mother from giving birth to me. Job cried and Job said, God has removed the garland of grace off my head. He said, I am now a pile of ruins. There is nothing good in me anymore. And in continuing this thought, Job went as far as believing that plants were better off than human beings. In these words, Job declared, he said, there is hope for a tree. If it is cut down, it will sprout again, and its shoots will not die. If its roots grow old in the ground and its stump starts to die in the soil, the scent of water makes it thrive and produce twigs like a sapling. But, verse 10 gives the contradiction. He said, but the person dies and fades away. He breathes his last and where is he? As water disappears from a lake, and a river becomes parched and dry. So people die. So people lie down and never rise. And, and so, people, uh, uh, so people lie down never to rise again. They will not wake up until the heavens are no more. They will not stir from their sleep. Job was saying, when I look at my life, I used to be one successful man. I had everything. And everything was taken away from me. It's like the source of my life. What made me the richest man in the east was, was gone. And he says, there is no hope for someone like me. A tree is better off. Because when a tree is being cut off, as I have been cut off from that which made me Job, there is hope for that tree. Job said, because that tree, even though its roots die in the soil, but when you sprinkle water on it, it will still come back and thrive. And he says, nature favors trees more than they favor men. Because there is no hope for me. I lost everything. It took me a lifetime to, to gain this wealth. And I lost it all in a day. There is no hope for me. I can never regain my wealth back. I can never regain my children. I can never regain my marriage. When man is cut off. When man falls down. He remains down. Until the heavens are no more, man will lie down and man will never wake up. And so Job, while he was a righteous man, feared God and believed in God and did not sin, he gave up on life. I want to preach this morning to someone who has given up. You are righteous. You love Jesus. You read your Bible, but you've given up. You've given up on your marriage. You've given up on your relationship with your parents. You've given up on your relationship with your brothers and sisters. You've given up because you think 
It's beyond repair. That's not a sin. It's just a problem. It's just a weakness that you as a righteous person has. And God was listening to Job. And God was listening to all these statements Job was making. And said, who is this who speaks without understanding? Who is this man who thinks they know life better than me? And God began to rebuke Job and said, were you there when I laid down the foundations of the earth? Were you there when I drew the earth's measurements? Were you there when I made the impossible possible? Were you there when I commanded the east wind to blow? Were you there? Do you know where the, the snow comes from? Do you know who keeps the snow? Do you know who, who makes the day to be day and the night to be night? So it, it's like you know a lot about life such that you can now make conclusions about yourself and say you are, say it's no more. How dare you say it is over as if you know what life is all about. He says, don't you know that I am God and I can make the impossible possible? Don't you know that I am God and I can write straight on crooked lines? Don't you know that I am God? I am the unmoved mover. I can move things and cannot be moved by anything. Don't you know that I am the unshakable shaker? I can shake things, but I cannot be shaken by anything. Don't you know that I am the uncaused cause? I can cause things to be that be not, and I cannot be caused by anything. How dare you get in, open your mouth and say, it's over for me. Amen. It's true that you may have lost your children, but who told you that it is over? It's true that you may have lost your investment, but who told you that it is over? Unless I say it's over, it's never over. Amen. God said. Amen. And God rebuked Job and said, you need to check your theology. You need to wonder, don't allow the pressure that you are currently in cause you to weaken your understanding of the greatness of your God. You see, how can you serve a big God and think small? How can you serve a God of impossibilities and think that nothing is possible? God began to rebuke Job. And that this morning, God wants me, God is saying, I want to re rebuke my child, rebuke my servant. You've, you're giving up too soon. You're giving up on life too soon. You're giving up on your marriage too soon. You're giving up on your career too soon. Yeah, I know you got no education. Yeah, I know you got no qualification. Yeah, I know you got no connection. But who says it is over when God still has a plan for your life? And God began to teach Job. You see, the beauty, why we come to church when... When, when immediately we became Christian and we became righteous, you may ask yourself the question, but why not just go to heaven immediately? And what's the point staying on earth? You see, sometimes just because you are righteous does not mean you are perfect. So what, what, we come to church because the Holy Spirit wants to work in us and through us because Jesus wants to come and take a church without stain or wrinkle. And so when you yield to the word of God, God will teach you. And the more you learn from God, the more your mindset will be renewed. The Bible said in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, it said, Be not conformed to the pattern of this world, but be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. So when you, when you allow yourself as a righteous person to be, to, be, to be influenced by the word of God, there are certain mindsets. There are certain perspectives in life that will naturally go away the more you open up to the word of God in your life. Amen. But when you as a righteous person, you focus more on your problem. You focus more on the fact that you've been hit and, and, and you become miserable of that. You close up on what God can do in your life in that situation. Amen. Who do you see when you lost everything? What do you feel when you lost everything? You see, when you, when, when, you, when you only focus on the enemy, 
when you only focus on the man that left you, when you only focus on the boss that fired you, when you only focus on that administrator that did not treat you right, you will close up on what God can do in your life. You see, what the righteous do, you understand that in all things God is working for my good. To them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Job believed in God, but Job kind of made a disconnect between his faith in God and the reality of life. He said, he thought that it, it, it was his power that made him who he was. And so now that he lost everything, there is no hope for him. But God began teaching Job. And God began teaching Job. And took him through a school of divinity. And Job began learning the details of God. And Job began learning the ways of God. And my prayer for someone who might be going through some challenging time right now. Is that God will take you through a course of studying who he is. Yes. Because when you study who God is, then you will understand some things that you may not understand. And the Bible said that when Job learned from God, yes. he put his hand in his mouth. And he said, oh, I'm sorry, Lord. I have uttered words without understanding. He said, before, before this trial started, I had only heard of you by the hearing of the ear. And I was righteous. But because of this experience, my eyes have now seen you. Yes. I, this experience has caused me to draw closer to you to understand the perspectives of life. Yes. He said, therefore, I repent of every word I have said that communicated negativity on my situation. Because I know that you are God. And your purpose cannot be thwarted. Amen. Job understood that the same God who blessed him could also be the same God who takes away the blessing. Amen. And whatever God decides to do is left to God. Yes, it is. And whatever God does, it's okay by me. I'm not going to be miserable because God took away what he gave me. I'm going to be thankful that God gave me in the first place for the time that he gave me. And Job said, blessed be the name of the Lord. No one can thwart your purpose. And the Bible said, God saw that Job had corrected himself of the errors he uttered without understanding. And God replenished his source. Gave him a double of everything he owned. That which Job thought was impossible, God made it possible. Yes, he did. But God only made it possible when Job came to the realization that it was possible. Yes. Are you listening to me? Yes. Job had to come to the realization that it is possible that if a man dies, God can still rise, raise him up again. Yes. Job had to come to the realization that if a man falls off from his career path, falls off from his relationship with his husband or wife, falls off with the relationship with his children, that God can still restore that marriage. God can still restore that relationship. God can still bounce you back to prominence. Because you see, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Jesus says, nothing is impossible to him that believes. I want to challenge you this morning, child of God. Do you believe? Yes. Do you believe? Do you believe that God can do it? Maybe science may have told you that it's impossible. Maybe the financial reality of, 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 of our times might have told you that it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Amen. Yes. When Job came to an end with the conclusion that God can do anything, therefore by the end of Job's life, 
Job realized that a man is as blessed as a tree. Just as a tree will still rise up again when it is cut off, so a man with God can still rise up again when, when it is cut off. And we, to, to show you how consistent the Bible is, we see this clearly aligned in, in Psalm 1, verse 1. The Bible said in Psalm 1, verse 1, and the verse is following, he said, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the ways of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on it he meditates day and night. He shall be like what? He shall be like a tree. He shall be like a tree. A righteous man shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of living. When its roots will not grow wither, whatsoever he does shall prosper. Psalm tells us a righteous man is like a tree. So this same thought that Job thought was not possible when he didn't have understanding, God corrected him. So we are like trees. God, with God, we can blossom. With God, we can bear fruits in our time and in our season. With God, our leaves will not wither. With God, whatsoever we do, we will prosper because God can make the impossible possible. Stop looking down on yourself. There is hope for the righteous. There is hope. There is hope not because of the connections we have. There is hope not because of our, because of the color of our skin. There is hope not because of what we have in our pockets. There is hope not because of the kind or type of education we have. There is hope not because of the kind of career path we are in. There is hope because we've got Jesus in the inside of us. And so when life hits us hard and we lost everything, we, when, when the marriage is falling apart and when the children are falling apart and when life is falling apart, you stay hopeful because you've got Jesus yes. in the inside of you. Yes. David made the same thing. He said when he was going through some tough times, he said, you can take away my kingdom. You can take away my name. You can take away my crown, but please take not the Holy Spirit from me, but restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Because David understood that with God in the inside of him, he can still bounce back to prominence. That's what you need. When 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 the world around you is falling apart, don't let God fall apart from your life. When Job was going through all what he was going through, his friends say, curse God and die. But he hang on to God and say, He is my redeemer. Even though he slays me, yet I will serve him. There is hope for you, my sister. There is hope for you, my brother. There is hope for you. Don't allow your weaknesses that may not be seen in, 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 in that sense of the word cause you to lose out on the blessings that God has in store. What are your weaknesses as a righteous person? Is it your attitude towards life? Is it, your, is it the confessions that come out from your mouth? Choose to believe God. Yeah. And let your faith in God not only be compartmentalized into what you do on Sunday morning while you live based on human philosophy from Monday to Saturday. Let your faith be reflected in everything that you do. Yes. Let your faith be reflected on matters that have to do with your finances. Yes. Let your faith be reflected on matters that have to do with your health. Believe God for everything. Yes. Yes. Don't give up. It's never over until you say it's over. Amen. Until you say it's over. As long as you hang on God, yes. then it's not over. Man may say that it's over. 
Society may say that it's over, but God can still turn things around. I want to leave you to this morning by encouraging you. Don't offer words without understanding. Because he who knows, he who knows your situation better, says it's still possible. He who has a better understanding on how man, a man and a woman can live together still says it's still possible. Yes, yes. He who is the father of all children still says it's still possible. Amen. He who owns the thousand cattle on the hills still says it's still possible. Amen. He who he owns the silver and he owns the gold still says it's still possible. Don't allow your lack of funds block or form a barrier in your mind telling you that this cannot happen. It can happen. It can happen. And Job was restored. I want to leave you today with a grace for a double anointing. For anointing for a double blessing. The prophet said, the affliction will not rise up the second time. Praise the Lord. My prayer for someone here today who have been afflicted, I, I don't know how you have been afflicted. I don't know who afflicted you. I may not know where you have been afflicted, but my prayer for you is that the affliction will not rise up the second time. I don't know what you have lost in your life. I may not know what you have lost in your marriage, in your family, in your career. But I'll leave you with the blessing of God. That may God give you a double for your trouble. May God give you a double for your trouble. Just as God doubled the blessings of Job because of his faithfulness, yes, yes. may God double what you've lost. Yes. May God give you a double fold recompense of that which the swarming locusts have chopped up your life. Yes. That which the fierce serpents have swallowed up your life. Yes. That which the whirlwind has blown away from your life. May God replenish it. Yes. Such that those who were laughing at you, who were laughing at you in your days of sorrow, will bite their fingers in regret when they see what God has done in your life. This man who came after Job and laughed at him and said, look at you, curse God and die. Where is your God now? They were all silenced when God mounted. Listen to me. When your God will manifest. When your God will arise. When your God will arise. And restore your honor. When your God will arise. And restore your name. Those who mocked at you. Will come to apologize. Those who look down at you and said. Who are you and what, what good can come out of your life. Will come to ask for your assistance. Is it because. The first shall be the last. And the last shall be the first. You might be at a last position right now. You might be at the bottom position right now. You see? Don't settle there. Amen. Because you serve a living God. Amen. Because you serve a living God. And so, don't let anyone take away your Jesus. Because that's all you got left. They can take, they, they might fight against your peace. They might even rob you of your joy. But nobody can take away your Jesus. Amen. And since no one can take away your Jesus, it is Jesus you really need Amen. to bounce back to prominence. Amen. There is hope, my brothers and my sisters. There is hope. Acknowledge the, 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 
the weakness you have as a child of God. Acknowledge the words that you may have uttered directly or indirectly that have displayed a sense of hopelessness and make a commitment this day onward and to no matter what I will I will not leave like a disadvantaged man just because I lost just because my family is broken I'm not going to leave as a disadvantaged person just because I lost my job but I will confess. The Bible said, you shall declare a thing and it will come to pass. May, may your faith be reflected in your confessions. May your faith be reflected in your attitude. When you walk through life, you might say, you see, faith, you might say, oh, I'm, I may not have it now, but I know that God is at work in my life. I may have lost my children, but I know that God is still able to bless me with children. Yes. I may have my, my marriage may have been broken, but I know that God is still able to, to, to repair the broken pieces of my marriage. Oh, my, I may have lost my investment, but I know that God is still able to turn things around for my good. And my sheep and my cattle and my goats may have died all on the same day, but I know that God can still do something new in my life because there is nothing that is impossible with my God. And so I will not, I will not um, sit down here and kill myself and mourn and be miserable. I will stand out and I will rejoice in the Lord. Let, let, let the attitude of David be your inspiration. The Bible said that David encouraged himself in the Lord. He encouraged himself in the Lord. He, uh, we, we are not told how he actually encouraged himself in the Lord. But being a man of music, perhaps David began to sing and began to say the psalm. He said, oh, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is a stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the evil doer assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and my foes, they shall stumble and they shall fall. Though war may broke out against me, yet my heart shall not fear. Though an army may encamp around me, yet, my, yet I will not be afraid. For one thing I have demanded of the Lord, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. That is a confession of a man who chose to stay positive, even though there is challenge and trouble all around him he said oh the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he makes me to lie down in green pastures he restores my soul he leads me beside the still waters even though i walk through the valleys of the shadow of death i will not fear encourage yourself in the lord stay positive because remember it was only when Job confessed that he was wrong to have thought that a man is not like a tree. It was only when Job had confessed that he was wrong to utter words that said there was no hope for man that God restored his blessings. Amen. My hope is that you would confess. Look at your life. What ways, in what ways have you given up on life already? I know you've not given up your faith in God. But in what ways have you given up on life? Maybe you've been expecting something from God. And you've been waiting for one year. You've been waiting for two years. You've been waiting for so long. And you're like, okay, it's taking too long. I'm not going to wait anymore. How long did Abraham wait before God fulfilled his promise of a promised child? Those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount on wings like eagles, and they shall soar, and they shall not be weary. Wait on God. I, I, I don't know how God is going to multiply you. He may multiply you in a way you least expect it, but God will not allow the enemy to prevail Amen. over your life. When God allowed adversary to attack to, to befall Job. 
it was not because he wanted to see Job suffer. It was because he wanted to see Job stand firm in faith. Amen. Maybe that's what God is watching out for you. He wants to see how you will stand firm in faith even when you lost your job. He wants to see how firm you will stand even when your family is now shaken. He wants to see how firm you will stand even when you're going through that problem with your boss. Will you give up on, on, on life? Or will you apply your faith in your life and put your trust in God? Yes. There is hope for the righteous. Amen. Yes. Father, I pray for everyone here today. Father, I ask, oh God, that you let this message sink down into our hearts. Those that are cast down, may they be lifted up by this message. Those that are confused, may this message bring direction. Those that have lost hope, may this message bring hope. Oh God, remind us, rekindle in us, oh Lord, that fire of hope. So we will burn for your name and for your glory. I give you all the glory and all the honor. For your word, which has brought light into our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.